Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Can we give the Lord our best clap of the praise again? Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Those of you who are watching by uh, internet, we want one more time thank you for being with us, for faithfully being with us every Sunday right here our, uh, uh, in our live service right here in uh, our sanctuary. Here in Richmond, Virginia, where a lot of people truly love Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, our our uh, pastor, our pastors are in the Winchester, Virginia, right now, and uh, uh, they are visiting Dr. Pam. So let's uh, keep them in our prayers, so that they'll have. Uh, good family time, and then they'll be victoriously coming back to Richmond, Virginia. Thank you, Lord. Say say hi to Pastor Mar and Pastor Name. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hallelujah. And uh, Brother Abe and Brother Joss and Dr. Pam. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, glory. It is indeed, it's always a pleasure to my soul whenever we are gathered at church every Sunday. Hallelujah. Do you know where the redeemed are always during Sundays? They are always at church. Yeah. Amen. Uh, if you are truly redeemed by the blood of Jesus and transformed by the Spirit of God Almighty, there is always that longing to be with God's people. And this is one of the best moments in life. Hallelujah. So I, I, I would say this morning, especially to all our brothers and sisters, all the members of, this, of our congregation, that it is indeed safe to come to church every Sunday. Amen? Uh, don't be afraid, don't be scared, because all the protocols of health is always faithfully and regularly observed in our congregation. Before you get into that door, you have to be checked. You have to be tested. You, you have to be uh, your your temperature will be tested. All our uh, medical personnel's are always over there at that door. So anybody who is sick cannot enter into this sanctuary uh, because you are always checked. And we observe even the wearing mask all the time. You should accept me because I'm probably 15 feet away from everybody. But uh, it is it is safe, you know. If you if you are if you have courage enough to go to the grocery stores or to go to the gasoline stations, I would suggest that be bold and be be courageous to come to church on Sundays. And it is glorious to be here by God's presence. And I believe God has always prepared for all of us this morning, or ev every Sunday as we come to this sanctuary. God is always preparing for God's people a special blessing for that is truly made just for you and me. Amen. It is it is uh, intended for all of us that we may we may be blessed that we are blessed every Sunday that we gather. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give the Lord the hand clap offering of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Last Sunday I started this. I'm going to finish this uh, second part of our message, which is called the heat, the heat wave of hell. Thank you, Lord. You know when you are speaking of hell, is is not really it's not a joyous word, but. Uh, Nevertheless, we must know about the reality of hell. All of, praise God. <clears throat> Those of you who are not here, here last Sunday, uh, I'll finish my first two main points, which is number one, wrong assumptions about hell. If you, if you want this, this or the script of this message, I can give some of it. That's number one, the wrong assumption of hell. Number two, 
is the reality of hell. Amen. That hell is not just a dream. That hell is not just a myth. Hell is not just a, a byword. Especially, as I have said last week, especially those uh, millennials, it's their expression. Every every time they see wrong, every time they see they see not good, they always say, "What a hell!" Amen. That's not just. It's not just a byword, amen. Because he, hell is a true place. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I would like to read one more time our text, please, uh, brother, uh, uh, brother Kids. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all our technical uh, personnel. Yes. They're, they're doing great Ooh. job. Hallelujah, so, so that will be available online also, that we have good, good uh, technical uh, capabilities when it comes to our services and even in our recordings. Hallelujah, led by uh, Pastor Well and Brother Kitts and Brother Abe and Brother uh, Kevin, thank you. God bless you and Brother B-Boy, praise God. Hallelujah. I believe God has prepared great reward for all of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Revelation 20. Thank you, Jesus. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having, the, having, uh, starting from verse 10, I should say. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. In verse 11, I saw great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was far for and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books are open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those that which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And I saw that that small and great stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. In verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. The heat wave of hell. Thank you, Lord. Before I proceed, I would like to just say to everyone what hell is not. Amen. Hell is not like a cassette recorder. Those of you millennials, you don't know what a cassette recorder. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Cassette recorder. You know, if, 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 you, if you record something and you don't you don't want the result, you, you, you just stop it. Amen? And do it again. Hallelujah. Hell is not like that. Amen? Someone who is, is already in, who is in hell, he shall be there forever. Hell is what I call is a non-stop or non-change, non-changeable. Amen? It's not like a recorder. But if you don't like it, and you don't like, you don't want to be in hell, you just stop it. And 
stop the heat, stop the torment, stop the pain, stop the punishment. It's not like that. Amen. Hell is not also like a room like this. You can, if you don't like the weather of this room, you can just go out. Uh -huh. Hell is not in and out. Amen. Because hell is a permanent, eternal torment. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, number one main point, the wrong assumption about hell. Number two, the reality of hell. And we're going to number three. Thank you, Lord. Number three. Hallelujah. Because number, th number three is the eter eternality of hell. Thank you, Lord. Eternality of hell. Eternality means it's forever and forever. Amen. No stopping. There's no what we call there's 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 no there's no uh, non-stopping what I call that numb. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 10 in our text, it says here, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Amen. Satan and his angels, the beast and the false prophet, shall be cast into the lake of fire and be tormented forever and forever and forever. The pain has no interval. Amen. The pain and torment has no ease. Amen. It's a straight line of eternal torment. There's no stopping. It's not like going to New York using what I call that train. Amen. That they can stop on their stations. Hell is not like that. It's a an eternal continuous pain and torment. Number two, the wicked dead will be punished forever and forever in hell. You know, the meaning to say wicked dead, when it's come to wicked, wicked dead, those who had not repented before they die. And those who had rejected Jesus Christ in their death will be punished forever and forever in hell. Revelation 21 8, it says here, Hallelujah. But the fearful and the unbelieving, the un ab 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 abominable, please help me, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is the one that made me tremble when I think all about my loved ones. When I think all about my, my, my relatives and all my friends, this makes me tremble. Amen. It should tremble us while we are still alive and while our loved ones still alive. Amen. Because we don't want them to be included in this survey, especially in verse 12 and 13. Think about ourselves. Think. Ask us about ourselves. Ask, us, ask ourselves a question. Amen. And it says here, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. 
and books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in them and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death you know this will just this is will must must make us tremble when we are thinking when we are thinking about all our loved ones who had not come to Jesus yet hallelujah because there's no avoiding hallelujah says all the dead small and great poor or rich beautiful or ugly dying without christ will be thrown into the lake of fire hallelujah thank you lord this is an absolute fair justice when we are thinking about the white throne judgment of God. Hallelujah. The wicked did. God rejected Christ. So number three, people who had rejected Christ. When they died. Will be, will be thrown into the lake of fire and suffered eternal pain and torment forever hallelujah because in verse verse 15 it says here and whosoever was not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire hallelujah Think about that, brothers and sisters. Those of you who are listening by, by, by internet and by television, by faith. Hallelujah. Think about that. Think about your loved ones. Think about your next, the, ne the, ne the next person next to you. Think about the neighbor besides your house. Think about all the people who are, who are who are walking by, by the seaside. Think about all the people who are walking by, by malls. Think about those people. Hallelujah. You know, heaven is a place of eternal reunion of loved ones. But in contrary, brothers and sisters, hell it's a place of eternal separation of loved ones without them receiving Christ as Lord and Savior. Think about that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's the reason when, when, when the rich man died, he still, he still, all, all his consciousness is still intact. Amen. He still, he still alive and awake and he can see everything around him and he can also think normally think about that in Luke chapter 16 amen he can still smell smell the dreadful smell of hell he can still he can he can still feel the heat the heat wave of hell punishing him and tormenting him forever and think about that, brothers and sisters. He, he can still think. And, and unfortunately, this, this rich man who had died without God, when there's no more remedy, and one of the maximum thought that came to his mind is about his five brothers who are still alive. Amen. Think about that. But it, it is, it is a 
trillion, more than a trillion years later. Think about that. Hallelujah. It's a trillion years, more than, more than a trillion years already late. Because people who are already in hell, whether they, they pray, their prayer will be useless. It will never be answered. Those people who are already in hell, their requests will never be answered. Those who are already in hell, their, their longings and their desires of heaven will come to no avail. Think about that, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's in Luke 16, 24 and 25. Praise God. So my encouragement to all of us, those of us who are still alive, who, who loves Jesus, those of us who, us who are still alive, who truly sense the glory and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the joy of being with God. The best time to pray and the best time to reach a lost soul is now that you are still alive. Hallelujah. I encourage all of us, the gospel is an urgent and the most important matter in the eyes of God Almighty. It's urgent. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 verse 13 that life is like a vapor. Amen. Those, 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 those people have been dead. They don't know that it's their time. Because death comes in a time that you don't expect it. Bible says life is like a vapor. It's here and later on in, in a minute or in a sec in, in second time in seconds time it's gone. And how about those people who died without Christ? And how about your neighbor and how about your sister, your brother, your even your parents who who dies without Christ? What what will you feel? Think about that feeling of eternal separation. Hallelujah. Make me tremble, brothers and sisters, when I'll think about this. Because this is not just a dream. This is not just a joke. It's reality. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The number four point, if you are if you are writing, brothers and sisters, number four, number four point. Hallelujah. Number four. Pain and torment in hell. Pain and torment in hell. What are the things that you can see in hell? You know, the Bible plainly and clearly. Describe it to all of us this morning. Hallelujah. Number one, hell is a place of eternal pain and torment. In verse 10 of our text, it says here, the devil, the false prophets, and the beast, Antichrist, I believe this is the beast, Antichrist, shall be thrown and shall be tormented in hell forever and forever. Hallelujah. A place of eternal pain. You know, in heaven is a place of eternal health and joy and peace. But contrary, hell is a place of eternal pain and misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God in this earth, especially in medical, the, the power of medical breakthroughs that we have. If you have your, if you, you know, in hell, there's no, there's no, there's no paramedic. Amen. There's no 
FEMA. You know the word FEMA? Federal Emergency Management Authority. Okay? Hallelujah. Unfortunately, if you're, if you're hoping, those of you who, who tries to live your own life without God, those of you who try to live with it, this is bad news. Amen? Unfortunately, there's no FEMA in hell. Amen? There's no 911 in hell. There's no medical personnel that you can call in hell. Unfortunately, you don't have your personal doctor in hell. Amen. Because it's a place of eternal pain and torment and misery. Yeah. Number two is a place of unquenchable thirst. Place of unquenchable thirst. That rich young man who had died without God. With all facilities of his consciousness. He saw Abraham and he asked a request. He said, Abraham, please send Lazarus to dip his hand, to dip his, to dip his finger on water that he may... Put it unto me that he may that he may cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. That's in Luke chapter 16, 24, and 25. A, a place of unquenchable, un, unquenchable thirst. Hallelujah. In our text, there's a lake. There's a lake. You know, when you are speaking of lake, this it's it's what they call it's it's a, it's, it's a vast body of water. Amen. In hell, there's a lake, but unfortunately, it's, it's a lake which is not filled with water. But it's a lake which is filled with fire. That means it's not just a flame. Think about that. It's not just a flame. It's not just, you know, my wife always asks me to fry, fry fish, especially spot. Outside. <laughs> he always asks me to fry those, those, you know, the, 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 the fish that's, 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 that's hard to, to fry is spot. When you fry it, it always is flash everywhere. All is flash everywhere. And I, I have to get a piece of, why any any paper that I do just to protect my face and my 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 hands of those flashing oil from that fried spot and even you just experience one one flash or a splash of oil it's it hurts man it's a, it really hurt amen some of you men <laughs> try to Try to uh, fry, fry fish. Experience that many, many times. Or, or, or bangus. What do you call that? Milk fish. Hallelujah. How about hell? It's a lake of fire. Amen? Lake of fire. Thank you, Lord. Place of un unquenchable thirst. Hallelujah. The rich man cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented. I am tormented in this flame. Number three. Pain and torment in hell. Number three, a place filled with worms that never dies. This is also awful. Amen. Those of you, those, those of you who are, who are, who are, they call it viru, vi, virupovic, you know, viru pubic, you know, or, 
or uh, what do you call that? You, you're so healthy. You're so you don't like virus. I mean, you don't like dirty stuff. Mm -hmm. Germophobe. Yeah, I like I like that germophobe. Those of you who are germophobe. Thank you, Lord. I, I have bad good news that in hell also, mm -hmm. in hell is a place of worm. Those of you who are worm poop, it's worse in hell. Amen? Yeah. Worm -opovic. If you are worm -opovic, this is worse. Better receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen? And better surrender your life to Jesus. Because hell is a place where worms never die. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, this is the most awful place. Hallelujah. I have a lot of stories about that, but I don't. I decide not to tell stories. Hallelujah. Told about a story about my friend. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Place filled with worms that never dies. And listen to this. This is this is this is this is for all of us. This is for Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9, verse 40, 43 and 44. It says, If thy right hand Offend thee, cut it off, for it is better for you to enter life maimed than having two hands go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, and where worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Hallelujah. Let me continue on that verse. It's not just hand. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to read verse 44 on that same book, Mark, chapter 9. Amen. You're with me. Thank you, Lord. And if thy, if thy right, Hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and fire is not quenched. N. Verse 45. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched in verse 47 it says if thine eyes offend thee pluck it out hallelujah foot hand eyes these are what they call Body parts that is used for action. Amen. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into the lake of fire. Where the worm dieth not and the, and the fire is not quenched. Hallelujah. Better to be feetless and handless going to heaven than to, to have the whole body going to everlasting fire. It's better to be eyeless. <laughs> no, it's, it's better to be, to be blind going to heaven than to have both eyes going to everlasting fire or even worms that dies not. Hallelujah. It's a place of worms that dies not. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish this quick. 
A place filled with wailing and gnashing of teeth. Do you know that? That means that suffering, that's pain. Amen. Now we can find that in, in, in Matthew 13, 49 and 50. It says here, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall comfort and separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and nothing of it. This always signifies, wailing and nothing of it always signifies pain. It's an eternal pain. Some of you had suffered a lot of sickness and disease. Probably all of us this morning, it's painful. But the pain in heaven, the, the pain in hell, I should say, the pain in hell is non-stop. Hallelujah. There's no pain reliever. Hallelujah. And number, and, and number five, in hell is a place of eternal black darkness. Black darkness. And he said unto him in Matthew 22, 13, it says unto him, Friend, how comes thou in thither, not having a wedding garment? It should be wedding garment. On, on, it's not weeding. I mean, it's not weeding. That's different. It's a wedding garment. And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's eternal pain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's always, if you don't have a wedding garment, that is, our wedding garment is what we call those people who had rejected the Lamb of God. Because the righteousness that is honored in the eyes of God is only the righteousness through the blood that was shed on that cross. Amen. Even our self-righteousness is just like a filthy rag according to the scriptures in the eyes of God. It's only provided by the cross. And by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the last one is a place of eternal punishment and eternal damnation. Hallelujah. I would like to read Matthew 25 verse 41 and 46. Hallelujah. Those of you who are Bibles, those of you who are listening by, by internet, uh, turn with me. Matthew 41 and 46, it says here, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting, everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hallelujah. Make no mistake that you are caught with all the deceptions of Satan. Because Satan is busy right now. Trying to deceive people that because he wants people to be with him in eternal fire in hell. Because hell originally is not prepared for man. Hell is prepared for Satan and all his and all his demonic forces, according to the scriptures. The everlasting fire, fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? It's practical reason. It says here, because when I was hungry, when I was hungry, you gave me no meat. When I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. When I was stranger, you, you took me not in. When I was naked, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they say also, they, then shall they say also in verse 44, Saying, Lord, when did we see you hungered and thirst and stranger and naked and sick or in prison and we did not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Practical application of the love of God. 
The reason why a lot of people is going to hell because they they listen to all the deception of the enemy and they fail to exercise what I call the love of God Almighty in a practical way. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Quickly. Jesus said when he see all those religious, religious Sadducees and Pharisees, he said, Matthew 23, verse 33, he said, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Hallelujah. A place of eternal punishment and eternal damnation. There's no avoid unto those who rejected Christ before they die. One of the most last important part of this message is the solution to hell. I mean, those of you are, you are still alive, you, you're, still, you're still breathing, you still have those physical senses intact. Hallelujah. You know, repentance is always first to those who are still alive, but late, it's already late to those who are already dead. Hallelujah. It's still, it's still okay to preach repentance to those who are still breathing. Because my number five point is prevention to hell. Hallelujah, prevention to hell. Hallelujah, and this is for God's people. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's all our desire. You know, this is, you know, personally, my motivation. One of the greatest motivation that I have is not to have a lot of money or to, not to be known, you know, to be popular. Why I preach the gospel. Amen. Why do you preach the gospel? Why do you do you share the love of Jesus? Why do you why do you do you do you invite people to come to church? Amen. So that they'll hear the gospel. They'll, they'll, they will hear Jesus Christ. Amen. Why do you pray for people to be saved? Amen. Because we want them, we want them to avoid everlasting torment in hell. This is my motivation. Hallelujah. Because one soul in the eyes of God is so precious. Hallelujah. And preventive ways of people going to hell is still available right now. Amen. Number one, the only prevention for hell is placing your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And receive him as Lord and Savior and serve him the rest of your life. I would like when Jesus, Jesus said when he was preaching, that's in, in John chapter 5. I would like to go to that quickly. John chapter 5, starting from verse 24. Oh, it says here. Turn with me, okay. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me had everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. That's, that's one, and that's the only way that people will be prevented from going to hell. In verse 25, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. In verse 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And verse 29, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that 
have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the only preventive person that God the Father has sent on earth in order for your loved one, one of your loved one, name them one by one, they will be prevented to hell. Hallelujah. John 3.16, you know John 3.16, right? John 3.16, for God so loved the world. If there's everlasting life that God has provided for those who believe in Jesus Christ, there's also eternal perishing that had been, that had been prepared for those who reject Christ. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten so whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That those, verse 36 of John 3.36 said, He who believes on the Son shall have everlasting life, but he who rejects the Son or he who abides not in the Son shall not see life, but the, but the wrath of God shall abide in him. Thank you, Lord. Romans 5, 9. This is also very important to all of us because I would, like, I would like us to build our eternal hope on one way, and that way is Jesus Christ. I would like you to have a false assumption. I would like you to have a false hope because everything in this world will come to an end. But your faith and your life that is built on Christ will abide forever. Hallelujah. Because I would like to give emphasis on this one. Thank you, Lord. And I would like to build your faith and your life on Christ because He is the only preventive measure that will have to avoid hell. Verse 9 and verse 10, verse 8 and 9 in Romans chapter 5. Hallelujah. But God commands his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In verse 9 says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There's no greater emphasis than that. That we shall be saved from wrath through Jesus Christ. And by placing our faith in his blood that was shed on that cross. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. People don't need to be judged forever in hell because Jesus Christ came to earth. Your loved ones don't, be, don't need to be judged forever. But they need to come to Jesus Christ because Jesus when he died on that cross, he took our judgment upon himself. Hallelujah. We can, we can find, we can read, especially in, in, in Isaiah 53. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. 2 second, second, second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus Christ was made for sin for us, that the righteousness of God. That we may, we may be made righteousness of God through him. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus said plainly to his disciples. He said. When before he departed from them. They were. They were. They were. They were. They were sorrowful. But he gave them absolute assurance. He said you know where I'm going. And you know the way. Some of them. They. They. Jesus had been with them for three years, but some of them don't know. They don't have any idea. And he, Jesus plainly, plainly told them, as, we, as, we, as, as those of you had, had placed this verse in our wall, you have done a great job. That's in John 14, 6. And Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the only prevention for hell. 
Glory to God. That's my number one point on that area. Prevent, prevention to hell. Number two. Hallelujah. Receive Christ as Lord and Savior. And number two, you live your life now to serve and love others. This is for all of us Christians. Amen. And number three, your life on earth should live the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Hallelujah. The most rewarding life that you will have is living God's purpose. And the most beneficial life you have is living God's purpose. Hallelujah. And the most useful life you have is living God's purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And lastly, today is the time to decide which eternity you, eternity you live your life for. Amen. Those of you are listening. Thank you, Lord. I, I, tell, I tell this personally to all of you who are watching. Today is a time to decision or to decide which eternity your life should live for. I, and I suggest you must live eternity with Jesus. Hallelujah. Not in hell. As I'm ending, brothers and sisters, I would like to just leave these four thoughts about life. You may tell your, your, your loved ones, amen, and I encourage you, but at this very moment, I encourage all of us this morning, find somebody to tell God's love. Because these four facts about life is indeed reality. I'm going to end with this. Number one, there is no repentance after death. Amen. There is no repentance after death. Our loved ones who died without Christ. No more repentance. Secondly, there is no more prayer answered after death. This is true. And thirdly, This is for those who, those of you who come to, who wants, who, who long to come to the U.S. U.S., U.S., U.S.A., U.S.A. is, is not enough to be compared to a glorious heaven. Amen. This is also true, number, number three, there is absolutely no change of residency or citizenship status after this life. Amen? How many of you believe that? No residency. Amen? Some, some neighborhoods are good ones, some are not. Uh, if you don't like your neighborhood, just sell your house and go to other neighborhood. Some, some nations are nice. If you don't want your nation, you can apply, go to the, to, to, to the, to the, to the uh, embassy of other nation and go apply and try to apply for another citizenship. If you don't, if you, those of you who don't want to stay in the U.S., you can go back to the Philippines. And those of you who don't like Philippines, you can apply for the U.S. and stay here. But brother, I, told, I tell you this morning that there is no absolute, no change of residency after death. That's why it's important for a decision now to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Because after death, after death, I repeat it again, after death, 
is absolute, permanent, eternal residency that you will have. If you reject Christ, eternal residency in the lake of fire. If you receive Christ and serve Him forever in your life, eternal residency with that glorious heaven, uh, with glorious peace, joy, unspeakable glory. Amen. And lastly, this is also for all of us. That's the reason why uh, it's very important, Im imperative for all of us, God's people. Because in my last point about facts of life is number, number four, there is no more ways to do kindness and love for others after your life on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot, if you, if, you are, if you are in heaven, you cannot call your, your, your sister in Christ. Hey, I come to your house. I'm going to bring you some pinakbet. No more. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I come to your house. I'll, I'll, I want to help you. Oh, or you cannot call me anymore. Oh, bro, uh, I need your help. No. After life, there is no more ways for you to show kindness. It's only now. Amen. Now. 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 Glory to God. Anything possible for all of us. Any way that we can see. We can show the love of Jesus Christ to one another. Do it now. The best thing is now. Amen. If you, if you, if you cry. If you cry for the good of your, your brothers and sisters. Of your loved ones, even your parents, you know. I I hear a lot of stories that when when their parents died, they cried and cried and cried. But you know what? When they're still alive, they cannot. They, they don't even. They seldom remember them. They only remember them three times. Amen. You remember your parents just on Christmas Day. You remember your parents just on their birthday. You remember your parents just on their wedding anniversary. Amen. That's not enough. There is no more ways to do, to do kindness and love for others after your life on earth. Amen. Praise God. It's only now. Repentance is now. Receiving Christ, your decision to receive Christ is now. Serving Jesus Christ is now. The best time to start is now. Serving others and loving others, the best time to start is now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we all stand up? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Here what we are going to encourage to all, all of us this morning, especially those who are, who are here in the sanctuary. You know, I repeat, the heat wave of hell is tremendously awful and eternal pain and eternal separation. Hallelujah. Think about all the people, all of your loved ones. Think about them every day. Think about their eternal destiny every day. Hallelujah. Think about the nations who are godless. And the worst thing about it, the enemy, Satan, is reaping souls of men and women every day. And he's busy. It should be an encouragement, one of our encouragement for all of us this morning. To pray for the salvation of the lost. To care for it, spiritual welfare of God's people. 
and to care even for our loved ones, their spiritual wealth, uh, welfare. Thank you, Lord. So I encourage all of us to be always on guard when it comes to our spiritual welfare. People who are, who, are, who are besides us, people who are around us, and people, especially those, those loved ones who are not yet in Christ. Because we don't know what will happen next. Amen? The best, the best time to start sharing Christ is now. We don't need to delay. Amen. I have that. I have so many instances in my life that I have that sense of sharing Christ, and unfortunately, I failed. Still, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still thinking about them. It's an awful feeling. Amen. But if you have already, if you have done your part. It's up to God. Amen. It's up to Jesus. If you share the Lord faithfully and joyfully and seriously, the Lord will open it, open hearts. Amen. And the benefit and the reward belongs to you. Praise God. As I'm going to end, I, I end with this. Those of you who are who are watching by internet. Especially if you don't have any assurance of salvation, any assurance of everlasting joy in heaven, I encourage you to come to Jesus. Amen. Think about your life. Think about eternity. Hallelujah. Because eternity is not just 50 years. That's, 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 that's not even a dust compared to eternity. Amen. 50 years is not, a, not even... It's not even a dust compared to eternity. Hallelujah. But I encourage you to come to Jesus. I encourage you to repent of your sin. I encourage you to open your heart. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10, it says there, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him, raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart believing unto righteousness. So if you are listening and you are watching at this moment, I would like you to just stop, bow your head, and bow your heart to the kingship of Jesus and receive him.
Amen. If you are, if you have prayed that prayer, I would like you to just uh, contact us. Go to jrii.org online, and uh, we'll uh, give you a lot of uh, uh, written materials to help you grow in your faith. Thank you, Lord. Let's close this service in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Even those who have been with us, Lord, online, and those, my brothers and sisters, who are here in our sanctuary, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for all the souls, Lord, that you have already brought into the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord, for all the members of our congregation. Lord, we continue to pray for all of them. Those, Lord, who are, who, not, who are not able to come, Lord, at this moment, oh God. We pray that you continue to guide them. Continue, Lord, to protect all of us this morning. And cover us always with the blood of Jesus. And provide all our needs, Lord, every day. For we want to serve you with gladness, oh God. Lord, for all our loved ones who are not yet come, Lord, into the kingdom of God, every member, Lord, of our congregation, whose loved ones, Lord, that had not come to Jesus Christ and had not received you as Lord and Savior, we pray that you outstretch your mighty hand upon them and draw them, Lord, unto yourself for your glory and for your honor. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.